Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. Thanks for joining me today. We have an open box video to watch together. You go through, get the popcorn out. This one's exciting. Exciting for me because I've got a uh, really large group that we sent in on the economy service. And I'm excited because we have a whole lot of coins to go through. And almost all the coins are going to be less than $200. And many of them less than $100. Uh, really, also, although there's only a few types of coins here, what we're going to be able to do is compare grades and uh, look at surface quality. So lots to do here. 1895 V-Nickel. Remember, like, share, subscribe, Mr. Subliminal. XF Details Cleaned. Cleaned. Oh, boy. So um, there is some uh, truth in lending here. This is a little bit accurate. You can actually see where it had... Uh, if you look near the devices, so that would be the design elements, and in the hairline, you will see some gunkiness, and so some of that was removed, and some of it remains. And so what's interesting to me about this coin is that they are technically correct, but also it doesn't have what I would consider to be typical cleaning lines. Okay, let's rock and roll here. So... Also, just as a side note, so you can already know ahead of time all my disappointment. Here you can see this has the same thing going on. Um, you know, I sent the coins in that I thought would mostly just straight grade because a whole lot of these coins are inexpensive and to send them in on the slow boat, on the uh, economy service, you know, you really need them to straight grade because especially on cheaper coins. Here's a 1889 VF details cleaned. So we get to compare... Grades. I'm gonna. I'm actually just gonna keep coins kind of going in order by grade here a little bit as we go through. So if you've been looking for some interesting type coins, uh, something that's less expensive, a nice modern slabbed coin, recently slabbed coin for your collection, then uh, these will all be available down in the show notes. You just click on the title description. There's a pop down thing that you might have to click on a little button that says more. And you go for it. So 1883 with cents. This one is a VF30. So nice looking coin. You'll notice on a, almost any coins, your very fine coin is going to be a coin that has most of the elements of design visible. But also will have a ton of wear to it. Usually no luster. Usually no luster except when... Except for when PCGS takes my XF 1807 bust half dollar, that's AU and calls it VF. But that's I'm not I'm not. That was like two decades ago. <laughs> All right, 1900, the legend of 1900. Let's go. Look at this guy. So this this was these coins were all from an album that we got in, and it was kind of cool because they had a lot of just like AU coins, and these are the type of coins that people usually don't send in, in to get certified because, well, they they just the cost. And then the chance that they'll come back details grade instead of straight grade is, you know, usually not worth the overall risk here. But the things we do for you guys, AU58 on this 1900. Nice looking coin overall, original luster to it. You can see all of the detail, all the hairlines are there. A little bit of spot there on the one of the O's in 1900. I guess those would be zeros, not just O's. Here's an 1883. No sense. You know what's really funny? Like there's coins that, so 1883 they made with sense and without sense. There's a whole racketeer story and we'll get into some other time. But uh, they made them two ways, with sense and without sense. And even though I've been doing this forever, I always get those two coins mixed up. Just a guilty admission here. The, uh, the with sense is the rare one. I'm going to say it now, and then you can correct me later. Another AU58. So these were all in one album, and we had a lot of fun picking them out. And I did try to pull out coins that I thought looked cleaned. So this coin actually looks cleaned. Like the other two that were called cleaned, it didn't look cleaned. And now I'm looking at the surface quality here. It's a little bright. AU details genuine. I would put this at a lower AU versus those other coins because you can see it's got luster to it, but it feels like there's a lot more of a luster break 
on that coin. Some of those surface anomalies you see like the discoloration is just going to be from long-term storage. Something that the coin got in contact with over time. 1912, this is actually the Philadelphia version, 1912. Interestingly enough, this actually has a lot of the same stuff going on that the other coins did. You know, these copper nickel coins, it's got a little bit of the, little bit of some residue on there, a little bit of the striping, but you know, doesn't have that high, high polished look. I wouldn't have called it a high polished look, but the doesn't have the same level of brightness that this coin on the left did. But uh, pretty similar, but this one they straight graded AU55. I'm gonna put my 58s, my 55s, like I said, we'll, we'll put together a grade set here real, real quick. Real quick, 1903. Once again, really fully lustrous. And one of the things we're gonna see when we look at the grades of these overall, because we'll take one more quick look when we're done, is you're gonna find that the reason that CAC works in theory and in practice well, in theory, I'm going to go with in theory. In practice, has probably more to do with the, the people who do it. But in theory is because when you compare all these AU58s, you're going to find some coins that are more eye appealing than others. And that is really the premise. So in 1912, there was actually three mints fired up these V nickels right before the end of the V nickel series. The uh, Philadelphia was the one that made almost all of the V nickels. And then you have the Denver Mint and San Francisco Mint. The San Francisco Mint is scarce to rare. And the Denver Mint, you see pretty frequently, but much less frequently than the Philly Mint. And also, once you get a little bit of some grade to the coin, so you see a lot of 1912s that are going to be just a low grade, good VG. But um, the nicer grades, you start to see VFs, etc. Not as much. So here we got, this is fun, because I got a VF20 and a 30. I'm going to put aside some, some of my clean coins. I will hold on to my petty jealousy, but I will get away from my clean coins here. And we're gonna go next up, 1896. Once again, here's another coin that has a nice AU look to it overall. We'll take a close look to it, add it, <laughs> look to it. Ay ay ay. This guy, the funny thing is, this guy looks like he needs to be cleaned, and yet he got he got the cleaned label already, you know. If you clean this, you didn't do a good job, I'm just saying. Like, there's a little bit of stuff here that needs to come off. So, once again, AU, but of course not as lustrous as those other AUs were. A little more flat. I'm going to put that over with the cleaned pile here. Just like every other coin is coming back clean, which is not... Not bueno, my friends, 1905. Here's a nice looking AU coin. Once again, you see the, the sharpness of the luster on there. And you see a lot, a little bit of, little bit of wear to it. I mean, a little bit of what I would call breaks in the luster on this coin. This one intrigues me here because that's a 58. And if I can be so bold, I would have maybe put that in the 55 pile, leading the jury here. 1893, ironically here, iron, irony is not the word to use. You think for a guy who listens to Weird Al, I'd know the difference between irony and coincidence. So this coin here, another one that has uh, they called a questionable surface quality here with the cleaning. You can see some stuff was removed here. So this one they said XF details cleaned. I'm going to put that in my details pile. Well, I mean, with all these coins that are coming back details, guys, so what I'm going to have to do, because I'm a communist, I'm going to have to charge you guys who get the straight graded coins extra to pay for the guys at the low end who don't get any. So... We'll have fun with that. So this guy, this one's really interesting. A couple little spots on the coin. You know, you got a little bit of some leftover stuff there on the surface of the coin. 1891. This one they graded AU55. Once again, you've got really nice luster. This is a good example of just how 
the luster breaks when it goes through that area you see that open surface area there doesn't have that same brightness to it we'll do that we're doing the grading thing while we're looking at the coins and if you're wondering if any of these are going to come back mint state you'll just have to stay tuned in 1904 I wouldn't have been offended if they would have, you know, called this coin mint state, just like a 61. I think, I think we'll compare all the 58s here in a moment. I'm getting near the end of box one here. We've got a couple of boxes and we're going to switch. Once we get into the next box, we actually switch to a different coin entirely. So once again, now we've got, we're gonna have a bunch of AU58s to look at and compare. And so when you're out coin shopping, this is kind of what you do when you've got coins, especially if it's not a rare date. So there's certain things that you're hunting and pecking for and you're trying to find that you just know you might not see, but once, once every five or six years, that's very different than most of what we do when we collect. Most of what we do when we collect is if you're trying to fill a slot, if you're trying to find a spot, uh, put a coin together, uh, you know, a group of coins together. This is what it's like to kind of pick through coins and understand surface quality, eye appeal, and all those things. And, you know, most of these coins are coins that you can see in multiples. And so you can start to understand what you're looking for when you're either trying to cherry pick or if you're trying to just find something that is a nicer quality for the, for the grade. So we got a ton of AU58s here. I'm not going to have a full grade set. A lot of the coins were nicer, 1899. I am a little intrigued at points on the things that they chose to call cleaned and the things they chose to not call cleaned, and then the coins that I think probably need to be cleaned. You know, like I said, old album, you know, you see a lot of the little green stuff on here is from that previous previous holders, AU53. Once again, you can see luster with almost no wear. So that usually gets an AU if you get some... Uh, Diminished luster and noticeable wear, usually in X, XF land. So this one's kind of borderline here. This is, you can start to see the luster is breaking up quite a bit on this coin here. And this one they called an AU50 on that 1890. Almost all of these coins here are going to be uh, less than, a, you know, between 50 and 150 bucks. Something like that. Here's one more with sense. Oh, this is okay. This is a good coin. I'm glad that I'm glad that this coin's in here. So this one, we start to finally see a coin that has, you know, you have just a little bit of signs of uh, luster, but the luster is like mostly gone. And then you start to see where, where. So like all of the, all of the hairline areas got really flat all of a sudden. The back of the coin, the reverse, is a little bit harder to tell because there's not really defined, fine defined elements on vehicles. You know, you have the leaves and flowers to look at, but those are pretty small surface areas. It's easiest to kind of look and look at that hairline and start to see the flatness. So this is nice. A VF35 is a fun grade to kind of look at. Just a just a touch of luster left on that coin, but mostly, mostly just that. If someone didn't know how to grade, they might say, oh, look, there's no wear on that coin, right? What if they just glanced at it like that? So kind of fun. I think I've got one more, one more Vitty Vitty V nickel, 1892. This one has a cool look to it, actually. For So you can see it's got a lot more, it's got the disruption in the fields. So pretending you're not collecting dates, like just pretending you're collecting by grade. That's when you kind of think about the comparison here we're about to make on these coins. So this 1892 actually has really high luster to it. I think it's got a fun look to it overall. Um, it has a brightness to it, so AU55. All right, I'm just going to grab me some. Let's look at uh, the differences here as we went from that AU50. To the AU53. 
I think this AU55 is one that I would probably, it looks so much nicer than the AU55s. That's that kind of scuffy look doesn't bother me. That almost looks like it just had contact with, with like brown paper, like the darkness over the cheek. But the luster is really bright. So let me see. I think I had another 55 in here. Yeah, dramatically different 55s. Here we go. I've got three 55s to look at. And so when I'm talking about cherry picking, or not cherry picking, when we're talking about just picking a coin, and if you're talking about the theory of stickering coins, and you saw these three coins, and you just said, you know, which of these three coins would you pick out of the group? Is there one? And for me, the answer is fairly obvious. I mean, I've already led the jury here, but like this 92 is just a really superior looking coin over these two. And same thing happens when we look at the 50... 58s, I mean, like I said, there's at least one 58 in here that I think, you know, so like to me a 58, I like it. If you can see kind of like there's a little bit of wear, then it's, oh, that's the obvi obvious 58, right? Like the one on the left, you know, you can play, we can play March Madness here and just keep picking through them and say, okay, which coin appears to have wear and which coin appears to maybe not have wear. And you just kind of head-to-head -head battle these guys all the way through until you find one that you say, you know, that coin could be new if I had it. You know, if I if I send it in again, maybe I'd get a 61 out of it. That's kind of what you're looking at when you're looking through coins like this. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this uh, 04 over here. That's a pretty nice-looking coin. So let's go on. We got a whole nother group of coins to look at here. Let's keep rocking and rolling unless you need to take a water break. All right, next up I have a ton of SLQs. Same thing, Standing Liberty Quarters. We had an album come in and most of your Standing Liberty Quarters in this set were kind of like that nice high AU-ish kind of thing. And, and so there were a couple that were obviously clean that I left out, but we're gonna have fun here because you know what some results are gonna look like for me because <laughs> you guys have been around long enough. AU53 on that 30S. Once again, Standing Liberty Quarters, possibly one of the prettiest coins that, uh, that the Mint ever made. Uh, so here we go, here's a coin that has a lot of originality. That actually is really luster kind of over the whole surface. The high points on these coins are very different than what you'd run into on some other coins, you know, you've got that entire, the entire front part, like if you drew a line right here, you know, that's very much so a high point, including a point on the shield here, this knee also. So you have a lot of different high points on the coin and uh, they're gonna get wear first. And so you can see like the, the top of the shield and then the head's always difficult because sometimes the heads are that flat on an uncirculated coin. So they can be really, really tricky, but also this coin has a, I think this coin has a lot of luster for an XF40. But once again, so the luster breaks, the luster breaks and disappears a little bit more easily on the Eagle. Because if you think about it, you know, this whole bot, the whole Eagle side is domed. You know, that's just kind of, it has a lot of open areas, what I'm actually trying to say. On the obverse, the walls actually are somewhat protected, which sounds strange because they're huge open areas, but also the rim and the stars and the body kind of protect those fields. So you actually have a look of luster throughout the open fields here, 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 and here, whereas the back area here, because everything is kind of down in a dish, that uh, everything kind of gets aware to it. All right, rock and roll. And what's also fun here, we got a 29S. Once again, a lot, a lot of luster left on this coin. And then you've got a touch of wear on the high points. You know, you're supposed to grade a coin using both sides. And it's really important on a lot of coins because their design elements are so different from one coin to the next, from one side to the next to help you grade. So 
I can't tell you how many times I look at a coin like this and just say like, wow, that's, you know, that might be possibly uncirculated. And then I look at the back, I'm like, oh, yeah, that has like 50% of the luster left, right? Like it's definitely, it's definitely traveled the universe. So, you know, it's got that whole area in there is devoid of full luster. And so comparing it to this coin here, what I'm talking about is that that area in here is what I'm looking at where you'll see it, the white travel and it stays white instead of staying dark. Whereas on the coin on the left, it doesn't have that bright white pop. It stays that little bit of a darker, even though it's a nice illumination. AU50, we got a 40, a 50, and a 53. Let's, let's get a whole set here, shall we? 1929D. Once again, and you can see how the luster gets a little brighter and brighter as the coin goes up in grade. Usually, not always, of course, depends on the elements it was around. But also now, if we're paying attention to how the luster flows on this coin, you can see like well, the luster breaks on there are almost non-existent versus this coin. You see the difference? And once again, once you get, usually if you get like that 45 degree angle to the light, and you see that it goes dark, that's usually breaks in luster, like the coin on the left stays very, very white at those angles. Not very white, different guys. So here's a 55, 53. Boy, I'm, I'm getting really close to an actual grade set here. 1929, so most of you are standing Liberty Quarter series from the mid, eh, mid 20s on up, like 25-ish on up. Pretty doable and uncirculated grades are almost uncirculated grades for the average collector. You know, the earlier coins, you know, watch out. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna hit some real doozies, especially in higher grade. A pretty little bit of toning on this coin here on the left hand side, kind of nice. AU55. And if you want to do a typeset. You know, you know what would really be challenging is, I, you know, I think that they started doing that, what they call an everyman set. So the registry sets now, they started doing sets where it's like, oh, you have to collect AE58s, you know, you can't collect uncirculated coins. It's kind of an interesting concept. Also, don't let the man tell you what to do, collect what you want. That's what's great about coin collecting. You can collect whatever you want. 1928D, AU55. So a lot of a lot of the common date standing liberty quarters like this are going to be that 100 to 100 and a half range. You know, nice unk coins are usually I think post you know 175 to two and a quarter. Just kind of depends. 1927. So one of the one of the big diff, big uh, exceptions to that rule about you know the mid 20s and up. I mean, really the 27 is known to have that 27s. That's the tough guy. I haven't told you guys where the mint mark is on these coins. With some of you, most of you probably already know, but the mint mark is right there. There's the D next to the first star on the left. Yep, the first star on the left. I think you turn left at the first star on the left. 1926 Philly. So this guy they called XF details. So they thought this was, coin was a little bright. I think that, that I may protest too much. We're going to leave that one alone here. So this one's kind of wild. So this one, I'm going to have to wrap machine damage, unk detail. I mean, that's like... So we got one that actually had uncirculated detail to it, finally. But we don't want to see the word detail. We want to see, you know, just a nice MS61 type coin, two, three. Give me something. Give me something good, guys. I don't think I mentioned this yet, but these, you know, we sent these on the economy service. But they were only gone for like a month. It was actually a pretty, pretty quick turnaround all, all around. 1924, here's another coin that has, you can see how the luster is inhibited compared to the other coins. 
and there is where of parent and also XF details. You know, this one, I would, uh, you know, once again, I think, I think that one, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, maybe I won't complain, but I don't know that I would have detailed graded. There's, there's actually quite a few here in a row that I don't know that I would have detailed graded. And I know some of you guys, well, how would I put this, are kind of Puritans when it comes to surface quality. I, I happen to think there's like a really, really broad range of surface quality that a coin will see in a very natural state that shouldn't be considered cleaning. This coin actually, if anything, if anything, this coin ha has PVC on it. You see how it turns white right there? The discoloration there at that angle, that's PVC. This coin needs to be cleaned. It needs conservation. And I can guarantee you that this coin wasn't cleaned, you know, for a long, long, long time. See, the, all this toning is very original from the album. And I really liked that coin. I still like the coin. I didn't, I didn't use, mean to use the past tense. Poor coin. It's going to be sad. AU details on that guy. So I got a whole mad run of coins here that they just decided to detail grade. Uh, and so for me, for when I, you know, as long as I'm talking about surface quality and I'm talking about cleaning versus not cleaning, like usually I want to see something that looks uh, like there's no luster relative to the amount of detail left. So like luster has been wiped and removed in a way that is very obvious, or I want to see some type of hairlines, or, or generally a surface that's just too, too, too bright. You know, XF details on this 18S. And really, really, I, you know, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. What do you got here? 55s all the way across. Well, here we go. Here we go. with our first 58, I think, I think we had 55s across the board so far on our higher grade ones. Super slider, and that's just a term that people will use sometimes for a coin that looks new, but will probably always be a 58. Unless you guys go ahead and buy this from me and then you, you know, you treat it, uh, conserve it, use the right words here and then it comes back on um, just make sure you brag about it in your story tag, tag me on instagram after you make money on the coins please thank you 1918 so the earlier versions there's actually a few different versions of these guys as far as some design element changes and of course the famous ones there is going to be the 1917. They have two different types and they switched to 1918. There's a couple other smaller design element changes that were done later in the series, which are all escaping my brain right now. But uh, AU-53, that's a cool coin. The early years are just really neat. I mean, I really like, even though that's not the type, the type one, the early years just have a cool look to them overall. There's something about the 20s. U.S. history in the 20s. It's kind of like, it's funny because people just talk about flapper dresses and the Roaring Twenties and the Great Gatsby. But really, outside of outside of that, the 20s seem to be like an unknown part of American history. There's a lot going on that was not in uh, Chicago and New York, heaven forbid. Uh, 1920, <laughs> just, okay. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, like that, just... Womp womp. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put that in the no column. I don't know. Like that that coin, that one's very nice. I wouldn't have called that one clean. So here's the type one, of course, famously for having, you know, an exposed chest. Also, you know, the, the details on these coins, this is 17S type one, had uh, you know, the date was the highest point on the coin. It wasn't the first time. U.S. Mint had already been doing that. They did that with the 1913 nickel. So you think they would have learned by then. So this one's interesting because you've got the nice AU50 straight grade on it, which is what that 1920 should have had on it. Was it 1917? 
type one, really fully lustrous. Oh, this is kind of cool. This is, okay, so this one's actually coming back, 8058 full head. So the full head designation is when you can see, uh, well, a full head, all of the head details. And there's actually different head designs on the different years. So what designates a full head, it varies. And also the guys who really specialize in this, they talk about um, like different layers of full head, even a coin that uh, qualifies as a full head. And then there's like, you know, something that's more of a superior full head that they uh, will designate based on which specific lines you can see or not see on a coin. Neat looking piece, got a couple 58s in here. And so this next coin is fun because this one actually, you've got a little bit more break in the luster action here. And so this one's cool because it's gonna be graded. You can see that it doesn't have quite the same full luster as the other coin does. A 55 full head. I think, I'm trying to think about the lowest graded full head coin you can get. And I, I don't know if it's a 45 or a 50, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in there. It might be an AU50. I don't know if you can get an XF. You quarter guys, you will correct me. I'm not giving you a command. I just know how the world works. All right, next up. Well, hey, speaking of the Roaring Twenties, 1921. Almost every 1921 Mercury Dime I ever get is just in good condition. This one was kind of cool because it was actually a little bit nicer. You have some separation on the lines on the fascies. That's the big war hammer, war axe down here. And I got a 21, and then we've got ourselves a 21D. We'll talk a little bit again about surface quality and what they see and what they like and what they don't like. And you can tell me what you like and don't like. So this guy here, kind of a similar looking coin. So the 21D they called cleaned and the 21 they straight graded at a fine 12. And you can see a little bit of the difference in quality between, you know, there's a little bit more brightness on the 21D here on the left compared to a little bit less on the 21 on the right. Also, you know, for me, I'm not so sure it falls into the category of punishment, but you know, say la vie mate. All right, we got a few more coins to go through as we switch through um, for some reason, I sent it an 86S. I don't know how that got in there. 86S is a better date. Also, so I got one more going to show to you. You guys by now going to be guessing the grades here. We've got mostly, mostly nowhere. Half the luster's there. Half of it's gone. AU50. Good looking coin. And, oh, I did. I sent in two Morgans. All right, so this 21, I, I just kind of liked it. it. had a kind of fun, you know, I liked it a little bit sometimes that little crispy burnt edge look. Had a fun look to it overall. It only came back at 63. I like, I kind of like that look. The overall surface qualities, like the main surface qualities, lovely, lovely, lovely. A little bit of a hit there. And then I think you just have a little bit too much scuffiness on the cheek, like that, that angle. So you can see kind of those little bit of lines. At a front look though, so this is actually, if you get it at the angle that blurs out the lines, which is what happens when you buy stuff on eBay, then you can see that this coin actually has, the rest of the surface quality looks like a 65, but of course the technical grade is correct with those, kind of those are, those actually look like almost slide marks. So if they were in a certain type of holder, you might get a slide mark on a coin. All right, last two coins, promise, and then you can go back to your life. Coins that I've actually had a pretty decent job of, um, Getting back the grades that I anticipate, so I don't know if I want to say that uh, I know how to grade because that would <laughs> we don't want to say those words. Uh, so on Franklin's though, of all the series, I think if you look back over the years, they're the one series that when I send a coin in, it kind of comes back how I think it will. You know, Washington quarters, it's always a grade lower, but I seem to be able to get 65 full bell line on this 53D. I seem to get the grades that I kind of anticipate on those for the most part. Now this may be exception here because this 54 San Francisco Mint, you know, 
it, this thing is like a tick away from a six. Like that little mark in front of Benny Boy, that field, there's a mark, there's a little spot, and then there's a like a fang mark right there. That must have that 55 uh, Dracula coin must have bit him. But these guys here, this one, just a tick away from a 66. And the tricky part here on this one, I think where I was just a little bit off, I, you know, that's not a full bell line. Not a full bell line. I think I was just going for the 66 on this. MS65, just a lovely looking coin though. Just a couple ticks away from being a 66. Not a full bell line. The 53S is really rare. The 54S, not as rare, but that's another video for another day. All right, guys, thanks for joining me for the coin marathon here. Um, look forward to you guys being able to add a bunch of new coins to your collection. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.